So what we want to talk about is what happens to the sun after it leaves the main sequence, primarily after it starts running out of hydrogen in the core, because it's the hydrogen fusion in the core that's keeping it on the main sequence. No, only the core has nuclear fusion. The outer part does not participate in nuclear fusion. That only happens at the core. So the core is what's running out of hydrogen. The outer parts stay mostly hydrogen. Uh, throughout the life of the, the sun, even when it's dead, uh, the outer parts did nev never took part in the nuclear fusion, so you still have hydrogen in the outer parts of the sun. Uh, in fact, the outermost part probably stays very close to the, the co current composition. Now, sometimes uh, when stars like the sun get very old, they get a little bit of unstable mixing, and some of the convection um, in the outer parts does dredge up some of the fusion that's ha the products from deep on in the interior, and you start to get some stuff being brought up from the core, and then a little bit of hydrogen goes back in from the outer parts into the core and sustains fusion a little bit. Um, that that mixing extends the life of the star by a little bit. Uh, most old books used to say that the sun would last for about 10 billion years. That's about how long it takes to use up all the hydrogen in the core. But this mixing brings a little bit of hydrogen from the outer parts down into the core. And so that extends the life of the sun by about 20% or so. So it goes from about 10 billion to 12 billion years. Exactly how much mixing happens, we don't know. So all we can really say is the sun will live a total of 10 to 12 billion years. So that's, that's the expected lifetime of the sun. If, you're very, if you assume there's not much mixing, then the sun lives 10 billion years. If you assume there's a lot of mixing, then it lives 12 billion years. So somewhere in between. Uh, red dwarf stars are a little bit different. Uh, remember, they don't have that rate of region, so the entire star is convective. Because of that, you can, you can use up all the hydrogen in the entire star. Uh, and so that turns out to extend the life of these things drastically. Remember, they, they, they don't live uh, very quickly anyway. Uh, they live a long time because they don't fuse very much because they, they, have, uh, they don't have much mass to support against uh, the gravity. So they, they, they tend to fuse very slowly, but you can fuse the entire thing. So that drastically extends the life. So uh, here's a little chart uh, uh, from the book that shows that stars that are very high mass, 25 solar mass stars, uh, that are about 80,000 times brighter than the sun. This L with a little circle and dot in it, that means luminosity of the sun. So that the, these stars are about 80,000 times brighter and they only live on the main sequence about 4 million years. That's nothing compared to the life of other stars. 4 million years sounds like a long time, but it's not that much. A-type stars, uh, like the star Sirius, uh, they are about three times the mass of the sun, and they're, they're quite a bit warmer. They're, uh, they're, they're uh, uh, almost double the temperature of the sun. They're about 60 times brighter. They live 800 million years total. Uh, that's just under a billion years. Remember, a G-type star, like the sun, uh, um, lives about, that says 12,000, that's 12,000 million. So that's 12 billion years right there. Uh, K-type stars can live for 25 billion years. And little bitty M-type stars, M-type stars like Bernard Star or Wolf 359, they can live for 700 billion years. That's important because the entire universe is only 13.7 billion years old. That means these little dim stars down here, the K's and the M's, have never died. None of them, ever. The universe is not old enough for any of them to have died. And so uh, if, you, if want anyone that has made, it's still around. And so uh, these other stars have time to die. Uh, some of the G-type stars that formed real early in the universe are now dying. Um, A-type stars, uh, only recent ones are living. In, in fact, 
O and B stars, none of the O and B stars you see out there today were visible to the dinosaurs. Uh, because the dinosaurs died off 65 million years ago, and they do not even live that long. So any O, type, o or B type stars that were living when the dinosaurs looked up and saw stars have long since died. So all the ones that you see today are relative, relatively newcomers in the galaxy. Once the sun quits fusing, the core doesn't fuse anymore. It's primarily just helium. And so what happens is this, the interior of the sun starts to shrink. And so as the interior of the sun starts shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, which causes the region around the interior to start get hot. And so you have this shell of hot gas that's surrounding the core. Well, when that gas gets hot, it expands. Uh, uh, so that pushes on the outer parts of the, of the sun, and the outer part of the sun gradually get bigger. Uh, now, when a gas is forced to get bigger, it gets cooler. So the outer parts of the sun will get bigger and they will get cooler. Uh, now, the total heat output is increased because it's gotten so much bigger, but the uh, total brightness is up, but the temperature of the surface gases is less. So the sun will no longer be a G-type star. In fact, it's questionable whether you want to even call it a star because it's not fusing anything at the moment. And so, uh, but the core is going to be this dead blob of helium surrounded by this layer of really hot gas that's, that's got some hydrogen helium in it, and the outer parts, which haven't really changed, they're just like bigger and cooler. Uh, eventually, though, what's going to happen is that shell that's there, uh, that's hot gas, will get so hot and so compact and so compressed, it starts fusing. So it's not fusing in the core anymore. The core is not doing anything. It's just sitting there. And surrounding the core is going to be uh, this shell. And the shell is what's fusing. And so at that point, it makes the outer parts of the sun really expand. And so the entire outer part of the sun starts to expand. It gets very big. It gets red. And so on the HR diagram, if you remember, big and red is in the upper right. And so what happens is the sun expands, it gets bigger, it gets brighter, and becomes what we call a red giant. When it's a subgiant, it's a little bit expanded because the core is compact and there's that, there's that hot shell. But when the hot shell starts to fuse, it releases so much energy, it really pushes in the outer part of the sun, and it expands a red giant and so so as the star as the sun starts to to age it moves a little bit on the hr diagram becomes a subgiant and becomes a subgiant when uh uh the core starts squeezing smaller and you get that hot shell of gas but once that shell of gas starts fusing then it really expands up upwards and becomes a red giant and so uh, that's, that's, that's the future of the sun on the HR diagram. Um, here's an example of some uh, data from the Hipparchus satellite showing stars. Uh, the most stars are in the main sequence, but these stars up here that are giants are primarily dying stars or dead stars, depending on how you look at it. The core is dead. Uh, but the outer parts of the, what's happening is the outer parts haven't really changed, but above the core, you've got this shell that's fusing hydrogen into helium. And that's causing the outer parts of the star to really swell and become giants. Uh, how big is a red giant? Red giant is huge, hence the name giant. The sun can have a diameter as a red giant of almost one astronomical unit. And so that means the, the edge of the sun is going to be half an AU from the center. That means it would totally swallow the planet Mercury. In fact, Venus would be scoot scooting along just above the surface and would probably be uh, reduced to just a molten blob uh, heated up. In fact, Earth would be pretty much toast as well. It'd be so hot on Earth that it'd probably strip the Earth of its and so an example of a nearby red giant is the star Arcturus. And here's an image of 
uh, rather a diagram how big Arcturus would be compared to the sun uh, if they were drawn from the sun. So that would be the view of the sun from Earth once it becomes a red giant.